Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Inspired with Christopher Williams. I am your host, Christopher Williams, your navigator and your motivator on a path of achieving your goals and also accomplishing your dreams. I want to thank everybody for reaching out and all your kind words and the encouragement you've been given and your feedback on the show. Uh, I'm just so happy that everybody's getting so much from it. Always drop me a line online, facebook.com slash williamsinc, onewilliamsenterprises.com, and onewilliamsenterprises at gmail.com. I'm always available to help you out with anything you need, and that way we can go ahead and we can continue to keep momentum going with you, okay? Always excited to help everybody. Um, just some of the questions I've been getting. I've had some people give me questions about the elevator pitches and just trying to figure out what would be the best means for them and giving me some examples and letting me know their industry. It's been a great experience thus far. And I'm glad everybody's getting something out of it. That's the main thing. You know, what do you get out of it? What can you take with you? And what can you have that benefits yourself? You know, <clears throat> things that you can pass on to friends and everybody else. Today's episode is going to be very unique. We're going to talk about communication. Now, I figured in light of everything that's going on in society and always mainstream media, there's always something going on mainstream media, it's very beneficial to talk about communication because everybody can benefit from it, whether you're a business professional or whether you're just needing some tips on, you know, uh, effective ways to communicate at your job or even personally, you know, everybody could benefit from learning better ways of communication. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, I want to just break down the basic meaning of what communication even is. Communication is basically the exchange of information between two people or a group of people. It doesn't have to be, you know, extreme. You don't have to always think about, you know, a lot of important things. It could be something very simple. But the main thing is that you communicate it the right way. One other thing to remember about communication is that it's not always about the person who is giving the message. It's actually about the person who is receiving the message. Let me expound on that a little bit more. So after you realize and understand who your audience is, you want to make sure that you tailor your message to fit your audience. Okay. Once you tailor your message, that will make sure you have a clear and concise objective. And that way you may be able to get through to them a little bit different. It may be a little easier than you think. But the main thing is, is that you want to make sure that you're speaking directly to that person and that they're truly understanding what you're saying. Another thing that you want to also realize is that not every means of communication works for everybody. If you're in an office setting, most of the time, everything goes through email. Okay? So with email, you have to realize a few things. One, Sometimes when you're trying to get a little bit of uh, emotion through, it may not come through in an email. Or you want to make sure that you tailor your grammar so that the person doesn't think you're angry with them when you're really excited or when you're really just wanting feedback. So that's very important to remember because if you're sitting there yelling at somebody or if it, if it comes off as that you're yelling, then you may not get the response you want. So just keep these things in mind and always be conscious of these things when you're doing or when you're sending your emails or whenever you're doing anything that's not involving verbal or face-to-face -face, uh, communication. Speaking of verbal communication, that's actually one of two of the different types of communication. You have verbal communication and you have nonverbal communication. Verbal communication, of course, is the obvious face-to-face -face conversation. Anytime you can interact with someone face-to-face, be able to feel their emotion, feel how they feel about what you're saying, see their facial expressions, see their body language. That's always good uh, conversation and good communication to have. Also, when it comes to a face-to-face -face conversation, you be, you're able to kind of get a, a more, <clears throat> I guess you could say, a lot faster response rather than something through email or through text message. Also, with verbal communication, when you're speaking to somebody face-to-face, you're able to gauge whether they're really liking or understanding what you're saying. And that makes a lot of things important when it comes to business proposals or whether you need feedback for any kind of idea that you're trying to get through. Another type of communication, as I stated earlier, is nonverbal communication. This actually can include a couple of unique things that you may not have even thought about. Uh, the way you dress. 
That's a type of nonverbal communication. Sometimes people dress unique to fit their mood or to fit their personality. And believe it or not, that may affect how you communicate with that person. Say, for instance, somebody wearing all of one color. That person, you know, may be a part of a group. They may be a part of a program that's going on. So anything in that nature may be, some things may be a little bit more off limits than you think. But that's still a, a type of communication. Also, body language. You know, if somebody's standing a certain way, if somebody's leaning a certain way or they're breathing heavily or they're sighing every time you say something, that may mean that they really don't like what you're saying or they may, they may not have an interest in what you're talking about. So these things are very important to remember when you're trying to get your point across or you're considering the audience that you're talking to. Always with any type of communication, you always have to remember that sometimes the message is not necessarily what you say, but it can be how you say it. If you're coming across somebody and you're being very direct and you're standing and you're staring at them straight up and down, sometimes that can come off as very abrasive. It can come off as, as you know, as is very uh, intimidating. So you don't want to always talk the same way to everybody. But consider who you're talking to. You know, if you're talking to a manager or something, you may want to make sure that it's not seen as a way as coming off as too direct or too demanding. But, you know, you may want to take another approach, maybe more conversational. However, if you're talking to a good friend, you know, it may not matter how you're talking to them, you know, as long as the mood is like, okay? So just make sure you're understanding who you're talking to, know your audience, and also know the means of communication that you're about to engage in. Because the other part of this is that they have to decode what you're saying as well. See, so you've thought about what you want to say, you figured out what the best way of saying it is, but now that person has to not only interpret what you said, but they have to see if they can get meaning out of what you said as well. Because until they do this, you guys are still not on the same page. So make sure you, you're doing the best that you can to get through to that person. Because just like I said at the very beginning, communication is always about the other person. Now, believe it or not, there is actually a science behind this. I know we talk a lot about, you know, talking to people, the best way to talk to people, uh, how you go about doing that. But hopefully you realize that there is a science. Now, if you can understand the science behind communication, you will have so many more effective communications effective conversations, effective interactions with people, and then, believe it or not, you'll actually get the results that you want. So, what I want you to remember is this. A, when you're talking to somebody, first think of the idea that you want to talk about. It could be a very simple statement, or it could be something that is going to open up a new type of conversation. You may need to have a long conversation. You may need to have a meeting with somebody. But the idea behind starting your thought process geared on this or whatever subject it is, is that you want to make sure that you have a goal in mind. What do you want to achieve? After that, also consider what would be the best way to get through to that person or what would be the best way to get your message across to whoever your audience is. Not every means of communication is going to work for everybody. You have to remember, people are individuals. You are an individual. People may not be able to get through to you the same way that they can get through to, you know, a friend or your mom or dad and you want to make sure that somebody gives you that you know that courtesy you know so you want to make sure that you give that same courtesy back after you've considered your audience you've considered the message that you want to get across think about this is there something in a way of me being able to get through to that person or to that group of people that's very important because if there's anything in the way then you may have to communicate a little differently just to accommodate for whatever obstacles that you may have in your way. And what you want to do to make sure that your message is coming across the right way is sometimes you may want to just go over what you said to make sure that there is understanding. We're going to get into these strategy, strategies just a little bit more on the next episode, but I wanted to make sure that we had a good uh, entry point so that everybody understands a, where well, we're going to go for this next segment, but also that you understand maybe how this show relates to maybe how you communicate with people currently. You know, you may see some things now that can help you out, you know, with further conversations. And also you may learn a different way of communication. So hopefully this sets the groundwork so that we can continue to have some more fun in the next segment, okay? 
10 years to learn the business, 10 years to make a name, one year on your own. It takes time to build a small business, but only 60 days to transform it with email marketing from Constant Contact. Sign up with Constant Contact and get 60 days of free email marketing to generate referrals, connect with clients, and build the business you've always wanted. Constant Contact. Start your 60-day free trial today. We want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for help making the show possible. Today's points of power comes from the idea of lending a helping hand. You know, today's society always tells us that, you know, we're to cut things that we're used to and start fresh, cut off people who aren't going where you're going and, you know, do your own thing and make all this money and do all these great things by yourself. But anybody who's anybody or anybody who's worth anything knows that it still takes a village. At some point, you are going to need some help. I realized this a little bit on my own. Uh, and it's tough, especially when you're used to doing things by yourself. But there's joy that comes in knowing that somebody not only cares about you, but they are invested in your success as well. So just remember... Somebody gave you a helping hand at some point, whether it was to inspire you to do what you're doing now or to, you know, to go after your goals, or whether it was just to give you a little bit of motivation to get you through a rainy time in your life. But somebody reached out and helped you, and I'm pretty sure you weren't where they were at that time in life. So keep this in mind as you're going forward, because somebody may be able to help you through something. But you can't tune them out just because they're not who you are and where you are. So as you're going through life, as you're knocking down those barriers, as you're achieving these goals, as you're accomplishing your dreams and doing all this great stuff, just remember, there's always someone who's willing to put the work in to accomplish their goals as well. And you may be the one who's called to talk to them or inspire them, pun intended. (laughs) <laughs> but just remember, there's nothing wrong with lending the help in hand when the opportunity presents itself. Well, we've had a great show today, as usual. Did a lot of great things, laid a lot of great groundwork, did a lot of good stuff to um, to go forward, and hopefully you're able to take some of these things and apply it directly to where you are right now. But we're going to come back to the next episode, and we're going to do it all over again. So hopefully you're able to kind of merge this show into your daily routine. But, as always, you're always able to find me online, facebook.com slash williamsinc, onewilliamsenterprises at gmail.com, and onewilliamsenterprises.com. Tune in to the show, again, on BizLinks TV. Also, you can tune in to watch the other episodes as well. Remember to like, share, comment, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad. <laughs> and hopefully they can tune in and they can continue to keep everybody informed. But, until next time, stay inspired.